Okay, so let's continue with our lesson from last time. Last time we had the different types of economic systems, specifically the basic ones. So for the next part of the lesson, we're going to go more in-depth into the combinations of political as well as economic systems. We have already discussed this in our history classes in the past, last year, but uh, today we're gonna look more into the economic meanings as well as the economic concepts behind the different types of political and economic systems. So the first one, we have capitalism. And when we're talking about capitalism, it has several assumptions. Capitalism was a theory based on uh, Adam Smith's writing, which is The Wealth of Nations. The complete title of this is actually An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations. So what he's trying to uh, say here in this book is that some nations are wealthy because of the kinds of economic structures as well as arrangements that they have. And what he's trying to say is that if you have uh, these types of principles or if the countries follows this type of principles, then people are going to be more happy, the nations are going to be wealthier, and this will be sustained over time. Ibig sabihin, diretso-diretso yung kanilang paglago or paggrow ng ating ekonomiya, yung yield ng agrikultura, so on, uh, uh, yung pagyabong uh, ng ating industriya, and so on. Okay, so it has several assumptions. The first one is that freedom of enterprise is good because competition keeps prices down. So when you're talking about freedom of, of enterprise, this means that you have businesses being able to start or people, private people, being able to start or start their own businesses. Ayan, because it's possible in a capitalist economy, uh, specifically a market system, for normal people or regular people to just, just start their business. Okay, so freedom of enterprise creates intense competition among businesses. And competition would keep the prices down. The reason why it would keep prices down is because it is price that is the primary determiner uh, most of the time, for consumers to decide what to buy. Right? So, for example, if you go to the canteen, usually you will decide on price. Okay? Hindi lang naman all the time, kasi kapag tumataas yung income, marami ka ng ibang considerations, di ba? So, for example, you got a bit richer and you have more variations sa, sa choices mo ng mga phones mo, if you're gonna choose phones. Pero sabihin natin, you're just... Um, you're just you had just have limited income, diba? And what would happen is you're just gonna pick the one that would be most cheap to you. So uh, businesses constantly improve their products to attract customers or consumers and to remain competitive. This is not only with regards to the price, so hindi lang price competition, but also non-price competition. When you talk about non-price competition, the uh, the brands which have a lot more expensive products have to find a way to justify their higher prices. So, for example, if you look at Nike or Adidas, the more expensive shoes, yung ginagawa nila para mag-compete, hindi lang sa price, pero pati din sa kalang advertisements. So, they would feature famous uh, athletes, they would feature famous people, and they would try to appeal to the people itself. And you also have different uh, features of their shoes as well as products. So, yun yung classing uh, competition. Competition in terms of innovation, competition in terms of marketing and advertising. It's not just limited to price, right? And it would actually drive the consumers to purchase their goods and so on. Okay. So, for Adam Smith, this is enough assurance for the government not to intervene in the economy because uh, lowest price possible, right? It's only gonna benefit the consumer. Okay, so... Yung idea dito is that uh, there's an invisible hand, that's the invisible hand theory, that would regulate the market to the point that uh, you don't need to have a, a government uh, trying to intervene. Kasi yung mangyari, kapag the prices are too high, people would not buy from these stores. Instead, they would go to the other stores that have cheaper prices and so on. Then may regulate... Uh, yung economy just by itself, right? Because you're eliminating all the other uh, firms or businesses that are not competitive at all. They're not efficient. They're not uh, 
cheap as well as they're not innovative. Talagang hindi magsa-struggle sila because the competition is so intense. That's the assumption. And then next one, you also have price system. So when talking about price system, the price is based on market signals. You have two types of market signals. You have the supply as well as the demand. But specifically, yung talagang nag-influence ng price is also yung demand ng consumers. So market signals are money votes that consumers cast when they buy goods and services from the markets. Businesses will produce only the commodities consumers buy and sell more of them in markets where the demand for them is high. Right. So it is regulated by signals such as the demand, the willingness and the ability of consumers consumers to buy the specific products. And yun nangyayari sa mga produkto na hindi binibili, fini-face out sila. So for example, yung Goyabano flavor ng Zesto, because not a lot of people really want to drink Goyabano, even though it's my favorite flavor, it's faced out. Ayan. And other products like Nesvita, I don't know if you know this, but uh, they're also faced out. You also have profit motive. So another one, or another uh, principle that motivates capitalist system is that capitalism always aims for the higher profits. So the goal is not merely to survive competition, to make sure that they are better, that their products are much cheaper, that their products are much more innovative than the others or the firms or the other businesses, but also that they have the most profit, right? So they have more incentive to produce. When we're talking about profit, this is just our revenue, yung kabuang, uh, yung kabuang quantity times price ng, na binili, diba? So, presyo multiplied by quantity kung uh, ilan yung binili minus the cost, yung kinakailangan na pera para magawa yung isang produkto. That's the profit, right? And if you remember, yung ating cost ng production, this comes from the factors of production. So, ano yung cost na pupunta? For example, sa isang banana queue, yung labor, oh, diba? yung pambayad mo sa gumagawa ng banana queue pa kapag ikaw entrepreneur. Ano pa? Yung raw materials, yung saging mo, kailangan mong bilhin. Tapos, yung capital mo. So, for example, meron kang kawali, so on, ayan, at saka gasul or gasolina, lahat yan minus or i-deduct sa uh, price, sabihin natin 10 pesos, tapos quantity 50 yung nabenta mo na na sag, or na, na, ano na, na banana queue, 500 minus the cost of making that banana queue, tapos yung natira is sa entrepreneur, yung profit. Ayan. So, Yung nangyayari is that uh, the entrepreneurs try to lower the cost as much as possible to make sure that the profits are higher, right? Ayan. It, uh, maximum profit is the ultimate incentive for capitalists. Okay, so this also has a lot of ano, conflict. Makikita natin mamaya kung bakit uh, nagiging conflicting siya, lalo na sa freedom of enterprise at saka sa uh, price system. Because our capitalists would try to uh, hindi sila maglalagay or hindi sila mag uh, kukuha ng kaltas sa land pwede yan pero usually hindi nila ginagawa or um, nililesen yung kanilang um, investment or capital sa land yung sa resource at hindi din sila masyadong naglalagay ng or naglilesen ng capital sa may sa may um, sa goods sa capital goods they try to lessen it sa labor. So, sa wage. Yan. So, kawawa yung mga workers. You also have consumer power. Capitalism places enormous power in the hands of consumers. So, businesses survive because there are consumers that patronize their products. Consumers can use this power to ease out unscrupulous businesses from the market. So, consumers have the power to su choose to support businesses or not. Ayan. So, if you look here, you could see a busy market, right? Ayan. So, uh, there are some places that the consumers would go to. There are some places also that they would not go to. Not only for reasons of price, pero sabihin natin, yung uh, binibilhan ni Lola na to na, na fruit stand or fish stand, for example, nagbenta, nagbenta sa kanya ng malansang isda. Ayan. So, nangyari, mangyayari, is hindi na siya bibili. And power yan. Kasi it means that walang pupunta, walang pupunta ng mga consumers after nila ng first na purchase. Which means that later on, malulugi yung ano, yung uh, 
small business na ayon. So, it is in the best interest of the business to make sure that their products are quality so that they will be patronized. Uh, which means that it's a win-win for both uh, the consumers as well as the producers. Kailangan maging accountable ng producers or ng firms sa mga consumers natin. Okay, so I hope you understand that one. You also have socialism. And this one is my favorite type of economic system. Uh, socialism advocates some type of state ownership of means of production. Okay, so it believes that the state should own the means of production. Ibig sabihin yung land or parts of land. You also have um, resources and so on. But not all countries... Uh, allow this. So, some socialist countries, uh, what we call welfare state, they allow private ownership as well as public ownership. Okay. Uh, the reason why socialism exists is because it is actually a critique of capitalism. So, they believe that uh, capitalism has actually uh, resulted into a lot of inequality as well as exploitation. So, they saw how the capitalists, the bourgeoisie, if you remember this term from history class, exploited the proletariat by giving them very low wages. Ayan. So, if you remember, usually yung mga employers natin, hindi yan sila makakadeduct sa kanilang capital resources or sa kanilang land resources or natural resources na kinukuha. So, what they will do to increase their profits is to deduct wages from their labor. Okay. So, what happens is that not only that, but kuminsan, they would force the people to work hard, but would pay them less also to maximize profit. So, kuminsan, instead of 8 hours of work, you'll have 12 hours of work, and 4 hours, so, tapos 8 hours lang sila pinipay, so that 4 hours of extra work is unpaid labor, which is something that... Uh, is ano, beneficial, syempre, to the producer kasi may apat na oras na hindi binayaran. Ayan, so, socialists believe that the workers are best protected and the economic wealth is fairly distributed if the state owns the means of production. In here, it is the state that makes all the economic decisions. Okay, so there are some combinations of socialist states. Hindi lahat ng socialist states ganito. You have welfare states which, allow, which allows private uh, decisions as well as public decisions then, later on. Socialists believe in utopia or an ideal society where people work according to their abilities and have control over the work that they do. Ayan. So usually, we'll have cooperative communities in which everyone would work according to their abilities and that every individual must work for the common good and workers would control workshops and take over the production of all goods and services until an ideal socialist society is achieved. Actually, so socialist countries... Uh, a lot of investment goes to education of the people, right? Because the only way that you are able to maintain a society that would have that kind of ability, right, is if you have an educated workforce. So, for example, if you look here, it's, ano, it's a combination, yung sa Denmark, we'll use the example of Denmark, it's a combination of a socialist as well as capitalist state. But uh, these are called welfare states. So, yung, yung kanilang parang policy uh, is that uh, they're trying to uh, decrease inequality. Ayan. So, ito yung mga check or checks nila. They have high levels of prosperity, low income inequality, high employment, as well as large public sectors. So, almost 30% of employment in Denmark is from the government. And this is, uh, no, this is very common for socialist or welfare states because you really need a lot of government regulation to try to pursue common good or goals for the purposes of the common good. And there's also the idea of flex security. Tingnan natin yung flex security. So when we're talking about flex, flex security, this is uh, no, social security. Meron silang sistema, tinatawag na social safety nets, para maging flexible yung mga tao uh, with regards to uh, the kind of work that they do. For example, kapag uh, naging unemployed sila, napatalsik sila sa trabaho, hindi yan big deal sa kanila kasi meron silang security. Okay, so they have unemployment benefits. Ibig sabihin, binibigyan yan sila ng unemployment benefits ng, ng um, uh, country nila. Babayaran sila for a while, for several months. Okay, short term lang naman. Another thing is that they provided educational training already. 
So, meron dyan libre na educational training just so if they want to learn new skills and apply to other jobs. Yan. And syempre, yung kanilang sahod, already high. So, they're not really gonna be insecure. ba diba? Flexible lang. So, pwede kang umalis actually ng trabaho mo. Um, madali lang yan. Uh, dito, sa Pilipinas, for example, ang hirap mag magsabi na aalis ka sa trabaho mo kasi ba diba, uh, hindi ka sure na makakakita ka. Doon, it's very easy to just switch jobs. And, uh, and pwede din mag-relax ka for a while, take a break because you have enough money to do so, and then go uh, no, go work again. And this does not really contribute to a lot of unemployment. If you look at statistics, so this is EU statistics. If you look at the activity rate, ayan, 72% are employed in the EU. So, yung EU, these are European Union countries. You have um, Spain, you have Italy, so on, European countries. And you also have Denmark, which has a 78% employment rate. Yan. So, people might say, ay, hala, ano yun? Baka, baka hindi na sila magtrabaho kasi may mga benefits sila. No. People still want to work and actually they have higher employment levels compared to the other countries which do not have this kind of flexibility with regards to that. Okay, so, um, ayun. Uh, aside from ano pala, uh, training as well as subsidies or ano, or kanilang unemployment benefits na binibigyan sila ng pera ng gobyerno, you also have public employment services. Ayan. So, uh, kapag walang trabaho sa mga pribadong sektor, pwede kang i-hire ng government para magtrabaho sa kanila. <laughs> so, it's really easy to find a job in Denmark, right? Uh, it's not, it's not, ano, uh, it's, you're not gonna be, ano, uh, you're not gonna be left behind. You're taken care of by the state. Ayan. So, secure sila in that sense. Aside from that, ito yung mga benefits ng kalang workers. So, it's a comprehensive benefit. You have child benefits for uh, the child, your child, diba? family benefits. You have child care. Libre yung, ano, daycare ng mga bata. Yun. So, pwede kang magtrabaho kasi libre yung daycare ng mga bata. Materni maternity benefits kapag uh, you get pregnant, you get paid for free. Ayan. So, kahit hindi ka na pumunta ng work for that uh, nine months, you have, ano, you have uh, sweldo. You also have health. Public health care nila is free sa hospitals. Home care service. Pwede pumunta yung mga doctors and nurses sa kanilang mga bahay. As well as care of close relatives. So, libre pa yung care ng mga close relatives nila. In capacity, if they have injuries, they could get subsidies as well or assistance from the government. Disability pension, uh, so on. Old age, social assistance, as well as unemployment benefits. So, you could see how comprehensive their uh, security or safety security nets are. Uh, kapag andun ka sa Denmark, siguradong... Uh, hindi ka talaga mag-aalala na, okay, baka wala na kong bakain, ganun-ganun, because parang may net na sumasalap sa'yo, di ba? Or, uh, nag, uh, which catches you. And this net is the social safety net of the government. But this also means that you have to pay a lot of taxes, right? Okay, so, they, they have one of the highest tax rates in the world, but it's fine for them because they see that they are protected as well as secure. Ayan. Uh, there are two types of socialists. You have socialists that believe in reform or a gradual and peaceful transformation of society from capitalism to socialism. So, yung idea dito is that uh, socialists believe that the goal of socialism, the idea that uh, countries will have social safety nets in the future, may ganitong klaseng sistema sa Denmark, and so on, can be attained through proper education of people as well as peaceful political change. Right? So, pakonti-konti lang. Pag-inject ng mga ideas or socialist ideas. And then eventually, mag-turn yung capitalism into socialism. Mas magiging equal yung society. Uh, mas magiging... Uh, less harsh sa mga tao na nasa laylayan, and so on. But, there are also other kinds of socialists which believes that revolution is the only way to attain socialism. So, they, they really support the overthrow of the capitalist system. Yan. And it's a violent overthrow. Ibig sabihin, uh, there would really be bloodshed. Kasi yung kanilang assumption is hindi, uh, hindi mag-a-agree yung capitalist na 
uh, mawawalan sila ng power. Ayun. So, the only way to make sure that they are removed from power is if you have a violent struggle. Right? When the uh, when the costs of being in power as a capitalist are already too big, right? Resulting in the debts and so on or uh, dishonor or whatever, uh, so that ano, it will be replaced by a new form of government. So, hindi pa konti-konti. Gusto nilang ano, iisahan lang or maraming mga klaseng revolutions or uh, pag, paghihimagsek yung mga yare para magkaroon ng socialist na system. And then you also have the next one, you have communism. So we Okay, so we also have the next one, which is communism. So we discussed this a little bit before, and our example was ano, uh, Russia, specifically the Soviet Union, when it became a socialist, actually, but uh, actually communist country. So yung ginagawa ng book nyo actually, he's just, or they're just saying na uh, communism is revolutionary socialism. The, let's just use their definition for now. But actually, iba yung idea dyan. Pero gagamitin na lang muna natin. Kasi eto din yung pagkaintindi ng ibang tao sa communism. Okay, pero the idea of communism came from the philosophy of Karl Marx. And I think you will encounter this person in college and in the future because he's becoming very popular right now. And Friedrich Engels, Engels. So they wrote the Manifesto of the Com Communist Party, Das Kapital, and these books that try to critique capitalism and says that the uh, most evolved form of society is communism. Okay, so there were some people who forced this idea and they actually overthrew uh, regimes para mag-establish ng communist na state. So you have Vietnam, for example. You also have Russia. Okay. So, ba, if you remember si Stalin and si Lenin, they overthrew the um, royal family that ruled Russia, the Tsar. And they started a revolution in which installed communist or the socialist system. Yeah, so Russia's experiment with communism under Joseph Stalin led it to a brutal government which trampled on the liberties of people by using state machineries such as the KGB or the Committee for or Committee for State Security as well as the gulags. If you remember the gulags, yung gulags ay mga prison camps kung saan pinapadala yung ating mga uh, naging activist or naging against kina Stalin. Tapos pinapagwasel na mga heavy work like getting uh troso or uh, carrying heavy cement and so on. Ayan. So like socialism, communism advocates for state ownership, but unlike reform socialism, which advocates for peaceful change, they advocate for a revolutionary government. And usually, historically, yung ating communist na mga societies, uh, China, for example, or Russia or Soviet Union, they have a record of being oppressive. So, authoritarian sila to the point na yung mga tao have different viewpoints as well as different political beliefs or want to implement a different political system, just inject a little bit of capitalism or even religion and so on, are usually uh, put to death or killed or uh, imprisoned Ayan, or put into, put into labor camps. Okay, so let's look here. This are, these are posters created by artists for the Soviet Union plans. Ayan. So if you really want to delve into it further, there's a link here. But this just shows the plans. This is from the five-year plan of Stalin, or the first five-year plan. So this is the socialization of agriculture. You have the yellow, the land allotted to individuals, and then you also have pink, uh, the land al allotted to collectives or uh, cooperatives, and you also have red. Uh, the ones that are owned by the state. Ayan. So that was the land of Russia before. And they're gonna convert it. Or, or that they're gonna convert all of that into government pro property and then make it into collective farms, right? Where all the people are where people could actually labor. Then dun sila magproduce ng maraming mga uh, agricultural crops, and then they will divide it into the entire country using the government machinery. Okay, next one. Here you also have as you could see, they're trying to project the idea that uh, they're going to use modern technology 
yan, uh, fertilizers from the plains so that their carrots will grow and so on. Yan, mga modern technology nila. Okay. So, the idea here is that, okay, we're trying to increase productivity. We're trying to be a country that is uh, economically uh, growing, well off, and so on, compared to the past. You also have this one. So, this is the healthcare sector. If you could see the investments are on agriculture, trying to modernize agriculture so that they will get more yield. And you also have healthcare sector. So, this is the development of public health services. Ayun. So, I really can't read a little bit of this. And from what I saw sa research, uh, hindi naman masyadong in detail yung kanilang pag-describe with regards to this. Uh, if you ha somehow manage to read Russian, then you can also research this if you want. Okay. Next one is fascism. So, this one is the, the most interesting part of the lecture, I think, for me. So, fascism is a type of economic system which is a blend of communism as well as capitalism. Actually, the fascists hated communism. The reason for that is because they wanted to ally with capitalist companies. Yung ginagawa nila, yung gobyerno, tsaka yung mga capitalist comp yung ginamit ng gobyerno, yung mga capitalist companies, o yung mga pribadong kompanya, para gamitin state machinery. So this will happen during the war. And si Hitler, tsaka si Benito Mussolini, nag-isip sila, okay, so yung government walang funds masyado. Uh, with regards to war, let's allow the private companies to fund our weapons, manufacturing, uh, our uh, clothes, even clothes, manufacturing, to sponsor us, and so on. And they did. And it was in the best interest of the, of the companies also because they were actually getting money. They were selling firearms. They were selling uh, rockets. They were se selling steel as well as junkers and so on to the other countries. Kahit magkalaban. So, for example, pwede silang mag-sell. Hanggang ngayon nangyayari to, uh, sabihin natin, it's a uh, German company like Volkswagen. Uh, and actually, Volkswagen, let me check kung ano yung minafacture nila. Ayun, they produced the V1 flying bomb and the military buggies. And they could always sell parts of this to the other uh, countries if they wanted to. So, yung mga factorya nila, dati nag, pinag, pinagagawa mostly ng sasakyan, kinvert nila into a factory that manufactures certain weapons. And this was actually very profitable during the war. So, you could see here, for example, you have Volkswagen. The logo of Volkswagen in 1939, just before or the start of World War II, was based on the swastika logo with the eagle. And you could see how they tried to make it a little ano, more not Nazi-ish as time passes by. So they tried to erase the history, pero anjan pa rin siya. Yan, you also see Hugo Boss, the fashion clothing line. And... If you see here, they manufactured clothing, designer clothing uh, for the troops as well as for the soldiers and champion for the high-ranking officials. So you have Benito Mussolini here. You have, <laughs> ayan, you have mga guards, the uniforms with the Hitler or the swastika symbol and so on. Here you have Watson, Thomas J. Watson and Adolf Hitler. So IBM actually... Uh, help them with regards to uh, data computers, giving them uh, data computers so that they could monitor uh, certain uh, suspicious elements. Nagbigay siya ng, ano, ng computer sa Gestapo. Gabe, the Gestapo is the police that uh, they used to monitor the ones that they are suspicious of. It's like the KGB of Stalin, pero for Hitler. And then you also have Fanta. And the reason why Fanta is not marketed anymore as Fanta is because they have Nazi, Nazi uh, linkage. <laughs> so if you see the type of, you know, it, it was produced by Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola sold, sold it to Nazi Germany. Ayan. You also have... Uh, Volkswagen, you have this guy, uh, Porsche. 
And then he's showing Volkswagen to Hitler. So, ang rami pa niyan. If you want to learn more about the companies that collaborated or that got involved in the Holocaust, then you can also. Even Henry Ford, yung gumawa ng Ford Motors, and for Germany, produced turbines for V2 rockets and some other similar machine parts. So you could see the really madugong history ng ating mga uh, private companies. And there's a reason for this, right? If you're just profit-oriented, ano, pupunta ka dun kung saan ka magbe-benefit, di ba? So if you were a company that says na, okay, kung saan lang ako makakakita o magkakaroon ng profit, then mag-collaborate na lang ako kay Hitler kasi magkakaroon ako ng pera dito. Ayan. Okay, so it is like a, co a communism in that the state is authoritarian, but it allies with capitalists, rewarding them with profit as long as they let, left, let the state attain its economic and political goals. Obviously, the state's political goals is domination, right, of other nations, and they're helping them do so or do this. Okay. So you have a table there, figure 4.3, and it's also a good type of summary of the types of economic systems that, uh, or economic and political systems that your book has discussed. Ayan. Uh, authoritarian and market, you have fascism, totalitarian or authoritarian and command communism, Dem democratic, well, being a bit command, pero may mix yan ng market for now, socialism, and then market and democratic, you have capitalism. And I think that's a really good uh, sort of like, summary. Okay, so you also have classifications or other types of classifications of economic system. You have pure market capitalist. Uh, actually, this doesn't exist. You just read through this, but it doesn't exist. Because when you talk about pure market capitalists, there's really no government intervention. Okay, so it's the same as market economy, uh, the, the thing that we discussed, but uh, it's basically the same as market economy. Right? And remember that sinabi ko kanina that all the nations in the world are mixed economies because there's always government interference with regards to the economy that each nation has. You also have advanced market capitalist. So medyo ano, vague actually to. And the reason for this is because it's a theory still. So it came from this guy, Jürgen Habermas, and he theorized that the U.S. is on the late stage of capitalism already. And it's about to implode. Ibig sabihin sa sabog na, and then magkakaroon na ng, ng transition into socialism. The reason for that is because, sabi niya, okay, maraming industrial activity concentrated in a few large firms. Totoo yun. You also have constant reliance on the state to stabilize the economic system. It's true because we have been through a lot of financial crisis already, the 2008, uh, small types of crisis 2001, financial crisis. Later on, we'll have another crisis. And it's usually the government which intervenes in cases of crisis. Uh, for example, this one, pandemic, it's also going to lead to a financial crisis. If not, if not that we're already in the middle of a crisis. So it's always the government which tries to make sure that the economy is still going or growing, uh, going pala, uh, in cases kung saan medyo merong situations where there's not a lot of spending going on, there's a lot of distrust happening between institutions, and so on. So there's always government interventions. According to Jurgen Habermas, uh, if this, this gets more frequent, then people would start to realize, oh, it's better nga to have state intervention talaga. And so they'll realize, okay, parang mas okay if the state intervenes a lot. So socialist ideals. You also have a formally democratic government that legitimizes the activities of the state and dissipates opposition to the system. Ayan. So right now, it's a bit like this. Uh, you have corporations that have uh, more power compared to individual persons uh, with regards to democracy. So maraming power yan yung Facebook. They could actually influence elections. And in the Philippines, they have done so, right? So, uh, I, I, I want to talk about this a little bit more, but it's for another topic. Ayan. Pero you get what I mean, right? How they have managed to use Facebook to influence the elections by spreading fake news and so on. 
and ayan. And Facebook not doing anything at all in the past uh, about it. Okay, so the use of a nominal wage increases to pacify the most restless segment of the uh, workforce. Ayan, so tumataas yung wage daw, pero pa konti konte at hindi makakontento yung tao dyan. And so those are some of the types of conditions that Jurgen Habermas says. And then at late stage capitalism or advanced stage capitalism. And then next one is gonna be replaced by socialism. But we don't know. Okay. So you have classifications of economic systems. The next one is market socialists. So when we're talking about market socialists, it con combines both the features as well as of capitalism as well as socialism, where freedom of enterprise exists but governments can intervene in the economic activities for the public good. And the government controls the economy through restrictions and licenses as well as financial policies. I want to share with you a specific corporation. So this is in Spain. It's a it's a very big corporation but it's also a cooperative. So it's I uh, know it's in Basque country, which is in Spain, and um, it was founded by a Spanish priest, right? And yung kanilang principles is this: so education is the root of all sovereignty. The idea that you could be or that uh, everyone has the right to determine right uh, certain policies in the company of labor, as well as wage solidarity. Yung kanilang wages hindi na, hindi nag ano, hindi nag differ masyado sa isa't isa. So the CEO as well as the other workers in the company hindi masyadong mataas yung agwat, di ba? Uh, instrumental and subordinated nature of capital. So capital is not the primary motive for the business. You also have democratic organization, participation in the management, as well as open admission. Anyone could apply for this. And so if you look here, it's actually a very successful company. It has 257 companies all over the world and it employs 74,117 people. Ayan. And they, they work in terms of finance, industry, as well as distribution of knowledge. So very skilled work, right? And they ma ha somehow manage to survive even if it's a capitalist uh, system that they're in. Okay. Another one, or the last one, is the Nordic model. So you have a welfare socialist state. Yung kanina na naging example sa socialism natin na slide is the Nordic model. So examples of this are Sweden, Finland, Denmark, as well as Norway. They give more state control to implement social welfare, specifically making sure that people have social safety nets. They have free education, health care, unemployment benefits, with workers having more power in industries. When you're talking about unions, they could actually demand rights from uh, their companies. Ayon. So when you're talking about ano, yung ko ano yung mga ginawa ng mga union, uh, sila yung ano nag make sure na merong mga overtime pay. Historically, ha, yung reason kung bakit merong mga ganitong benefits yung mga parents natin is because the unions fought for it. Dati wala yan. They also made sure that there's maternity leave. They also make sure that there's uh, uh, compensation in cases of injury. So yun yung mga pinaglalaba nila. Diba? They could bargain uh, with regards to the companies for payment or compensation regarding certain cases. Ayan. So you have, with workers having more power in industries and a large percentage of the population employed by the state. So please just refer to this instead of um, here. Yung command socialist pareho lang siya sa ano ha? Sa last time. So, we already discussed this. Welfare state, democratic socialism. The welfare state econ economic system allows private and public ownership of resources and the existence of business enterprises. The government provides adequate social security services to the people and determines the workers' minimum wage. Sweden and England are very good examples of welfare state economies, but even more so, you have Finland, Denmark, and Norway. Sila talaga yung, ano, yung parang source ng, ng idea neto, ng welfare social estate. So, the reason why they have a lot of benefits for their people is because they also tax heavily. Ang raming funds na nakukuha ng gobyerno sa kanilang mga tao at dinidistribute nila to ulit sa pamamagitan ng mga benefits sa kanilang mga tao. Ayan. So, they really need a lot of... Um, 
uh, employment from the state. Again, 30% of uh, people in, Nor or in Denmark are employed by the state. So that's a lot because you have a lot of services to provide for. Yung kanilang um, binibigay na mga servisyo, universal child care system, hindi lang ano ha, education para sa child, pero child care. So they have a lot of daycares and the daycares take care of the children. Ayun. And it's free. You also have free health care, efficient public transportation, free de Danish courses for Denmark. So if you're an old person, uh, you could always take a uh, course for free if you want to learn another skill, di ba? Ibig sabihin, ang rami mong pwedeng makuha na jobs throughout time and wala kang, ano, wala kang takot na mag-diversify ng klase ng work mo kasi you're protected by the state. You have social safety nets. You have unemployment benefits. Again, you also have uh, uh, free training courses if you really want to... Uh, get more knowledge about how to do a certain work and so on. And syempre, you have a lot of income because the wages are higher than average. You also have green and bike-friendly city. You have a lot of public services like the libraries, for example. You have parks because a lot of the taxes go here. So they're funded. And ayan, okay, imagine sa Pilipinas. Uh, ilan yung library dito? Wala. Diba? Kasi walang mag invest sa library. Kasi it's not generating any income. Or yung parks natin, maganda ba yung parks? No, because it's not generating any income. Pero kapag ikaw, isa kang klase na state na meron kang ideas of social goals, you could always prioritize this. Ayun. So, and the people could dictate. Lahat ng tao ha, hindi lang specific na people, could dictate where these funds will go. Ayun. Okay, so you also have a safe environment, rich cultural life, as well as free education. And if you look here, yung kanila talagang uh, investment is on education. So early childhood education and care, parental leave, as well as family allowances in childhood. You have free primary and secondary education. Uh, kapag tumanda, tanda ka na, you have care for children, as well as elderly. Uh, and so on, tertiary education, you have lifelong learning, all free, as well as uh, uh, active labor market policies. May um, um, unemployment benefits sila, and so on. And then if you uh, get older, you have home health. So meron magsiservice sa'yo sa bahay, as well as uh, health care. So they're taken care of throughout their lifespan. Yeah. So Sweden, for instance, owns only 13% of the nation's, nation's production facilities, but it spends about 60% of its gross national product annually to provide its people with quality medical and child care services, subsidized housing, excellent transportation and communication, and mod many other social services. The Swedes, however, pay very high taxes. Value-added taxes could be as high as 25%, and income taxes could be as high as 72%. Ayan. So, uh, you decide kung gusto niyo mag-keep ng pera uh, for yourself or you have these kinds of benefits uh, for everyone, the ba? So, uh, that's the kind of trade-off that is gonna happen. Right? So, you have on the uh, uh, one hand on the spectrum or on the other end of the spectrum, you have Jeff, Jeff Bezos with his ilang billion na dolyares in a capitalist economy. And you also have in socialist economies or, or welfare state, people are more, much more equal. Right? Pero you have less income. So, what would you choose? Ayon, that's the question. Okay, uh, it's uh, I, my meeting is done for now. I hope you learned something.